scripture. So when I hold up the finger, you read the scripture that's out, um, all except for the part that says Pastor Katie, right? That's the part I read. Um, and then we'll go all the way through and read the scripture that way. Our readings are John and Acts today. Let's hear the word of the Lord. 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week, a week later, later his, his disciples were again, again in the house, and, and Thomas was with them. them. Although, Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to, to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he, when had, he had said, said this, this as, as they, they were, were watching, watching, he was, was lifted, lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has, who has been, been taken, taken up from you into, into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into, into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. So we have here two texts, and they don't actually happen one right after another in Scripture, but if you look at the actual chronology, they happen one right after another in actual real time, right? So John starts with, oh, he did all these signs to show that it, it, was, it was true. I mean, Acts starts with, he did all these signs to confirm he was Jesus. And, and in John, here's the signs, right? He came and they're in hiding. And we have the very famous story of Thomas, right? Doubting Thomas, or I, I think you know, I call him brave Thomas, right? Thomas was the one who, when they were on, on they were in um, Lazarus's home. And Lazarus had been raised from the dead. And, and uh, Jesus said, well, you know, when we go back to Judah, I will be killed. And all the disciples are like, well, then let's not go back there then. Let's not go to Jerusalem. Like, if you're going to be killed, let's not do it. But all except for Thomas. Thomas says, Jesus, is, this is where we have to go, and this is what we have to do. I'm there with you, and I will go before you, and I will happen. And then later in John again, right, this is all in John. In John again, uh, you know, he's, he talks about that he's going to the cross, 
And John says, where you go, I'll go. I'll go with you all the way to the cross. It will happen. And Thomas says that. So this is all the same storyteller in John. That, Tom, that, that Thomas is portrayed um, as this brave person, right? And everyone's holed up inside and hiding in the secret room, except for Thomas. I wonder why Thomas isn't hiding. And Thomas is also called the twin. Thomas is called the twin because, most likely because he looks like Jesus, right? His nickname is probably twin. He's probably twinning because he looks like Jesus Christ. And so he is the most dangerous individual right now because he is the most likely to be killed by the officials for two reasons. First, because he looks like Jesus and they don't want anyone who looks like Jesus walking around. Secondly, because they probably think he's going to try to impersonate the resurrection at some point. And so whenever... Thomas walks around, his life is in physical danger. But somehow he's not sequestered away with all the other disciples when Jesus appears. He is out. And Jesus comes. And Thomas bravely says, Well, I can't believe it until I see it. I want to touch the holes in his hands and the and the wound in his side. You know, without Thomas, we would not know that Jesus was disabled still in his resurrection we're human what what picture of jesus would you have as a resurrected jesus what do you think us humans would think if we didn't specify that jesus had the wounds perfect beautiful best version of jesus ever right and this is really interesting in the disabled community because the disabled community tends to say but i'm not me without my disability so yes i want to be the best version of me in heaven and yes, I want to be fully healed of all my sins, but I still want to be me. So here's Jesus. Jesus is still somehow Jesus and perfect at the same time that he has holes. And again, this is one of those things that if you think about it too long, your little human brain will probably shut down. We're not sure why that is. But we know that Jesus came back whole and yet full of holes at the same time. And so here is... Thomas. Thomas, who is probably really frightened and yet brave enough to ask the question on everyone's mind. Thomas, who's the one who says, can I touch it and see if it's real? Remember, not all the disciples even believed it. He had to eat food in front of them multiple times to prove he wasn't a ghost. This is in all, like almost all of the gospel accounts. So Thomas is not alone in saying, are you real? Are you for real? Are you really Jesus? But he's the only one who says, can I touch you? And of course, immediately upon seeing Jesus, Jesus says, go ahead, touch me. And he doesn't touch him at all, right? He says, my Lord and my God. And my guess is that there was a lot of hugging going on and that it wasn't about touching the wounds. That's Thomas. Also in Acts, there's another question that's asked, right? They ask the really... The elephant in the room question, are we all done now? Can we just go to heaven and rest on our loyals? Are our, is our job done? Have we done the things we need to do? And Jesus says, don't worry, I'm sending you. Our job is not done until you have been sent to all the ends of the earth. Now, how do you think the disciples felt when they heard that? <laughs> they they thought they were going to be, you know, lifted up to heaven and be done with everything. But Jesus says, no, I have a more important job for you. And your job is to be in relationship with all of humanity. This is going to be the beginning of Eastertide. And we are still in Eastertide today. This is the beginning of the grace period. So we humans thought Jesus would come, conquer death, take all, this, all the good up to heaven, and condemn all the sinners and be done. But of course, John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world, he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came not to condemn the world, but to save it. And the world wasn't done being saved yet, right? It wasn't there yet. So Jesus has given us this time and this church and the gift of the Holy Spirit because our work is not done yet. And our time is precious. And so we have all this grace period, 2,000 years of grace, where we still have time to spread the love of Jesus Christ, 
to practice relationship, and to get ready. This is the beginning of Easter. We are an Easter people, but we don't know how to live it yet, right? We have died and been reborn, but we are not quite ready for the kingdom yet. We want to live in kingdom, healthy community re relationships. That's what we want to do. And so this is the question. We would love, this is such a like great allegory for life. We Christians would like to look at heaven all the time and just ask God for an answer. This is exactly what happens in Acts. They look at heaven and they say, go ahead, Jesus, give me the solution. Has Jesus ever answered a question straight with a solution in any story of the Bible? Ever. Jesus almost always answers a question with a question. And usually his question is something along the lines of, why are you asking that? What relationship is causing you to think this way? What power structure is, is an unequal? What is going on? What's behind the question that you're asking? asking? So I would say that the, what, what's behind the disciples is they want to be saved and they want to be done. They're scared. They're being hunted down by officials. They know their time with Jesus is short. And they're like, so we'll just go with you when you go back to heaven, right? Our work is done here. And Jesus says, you need to go and make relationships with all of humanity so everyone can hear about my love. Your job is to go and love, right? I mean, think about Monday, Thursday, right? He knelt down at their feet. He washed their feet from the road, and then he said, love one another. This is the command I'm giving you, love one another. The solution for humans is never straightforward. First of all, even if we had the solution, I don't know if we humans would follow it. Secondly, that's not how humanity works. The solution isn't about finding the answer. The solution is to make relationship. That's always the answer. They've done time and time, study time and time again. The way to change people's mind is not to argue with them or give them the right solution. The way to change people's mind is to love them and be in relationship with them. And who knew that better than Jesus Christ, right? Who sat by the well, who looked up the tree, right? Who walked on the cross. He was making relationships when he was hanging on a cross. He was like, all right, these, what are you in for? <laughs> Let's talk about what's going to happen. He was making relationships till the very end. And when he came back, he deepened the relationships. He came back in ways the, the disciples didn't expect. And he formed different and deeper relationships with them. My guess is he and Thomas were closer than ever after this, right? That they were really, really close. And so this is what Jesus says over and over again. And so in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> when we're looking at heaven and we're like, all right, Jesus, we want the answer. I would love the miracle. I have a guess as to what Jesus' answer would be. Love one another. Serve one another. Go be in community with one another in whatever way you can. The command has not changed. It is the same thing. Make masks for one another. Trade yeast for one another. Go to the grocery store for the people who are vulnerable. Give snacks out to the people who are delivering your mail. Clap for the nurses and doctors, right? Do whatever you can to love and serve one another. Be the hands and feet and body of Christ. Be the community with one another. Jesus' answer is always the same, especially when he's asked legal questions. All right, who's going to heaven, this guy or that guy? Who am I married to when I die, my first husband or my second husband? Jesus is always like, look, you all need to work on loving each other. That's the most important job. All this legalistic stuff, it'll all become clear when you become part of the kingdom because that's not the most important piece. The most important piece is to love and serve one another. Don't be looking for heaven to, to heaven for answers. Go and be the hands and feet of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We're going to sing another hymn. We're going to sing Just As I Am Without One Plea. Then I'm going to start the prayer. Then we're all going to say Our Father together. And then after that, I'll walk around and get collection while the music's going. So that's kind of our plan, all right? Let us sing together, Just As I Am Without One Plea, the three verses. prayer together. Lord, we confess this baptism by fire is not what we envisioned. Never did we imagine we would stand so close to poverty and death. We confess that we did not understand how fragile our human structures are and how dependent we are on one another for prayer and support. You would think after reading Acts every year, we will have a better inkling of what it means to enact community on earth. But we confess it's a struggle. Help us to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
This rock is Jesus, yes, he is the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the Thank <laughs> you.